Did you know that there is an Egyptian myth about the Great Flood that predates the Bible? Hello and welcome to World History Encyclopedia. My name is Kelly and today's video is all about the ancient Egyptian goddess Hathor, the goddess of love, fertility, protector of women, and so much more. Don't forget, the easiest way to support us is by giving this video a thumbs up, subscribing to our channel, and hitting that bell icon for notifications so you don't miss out on any new uploads. If you haven't already heard, World History Encyclopedia has teamed up with Andante Travels to bring you the Treasures of Ancient Greece guided tour. Join our expert tour guide, Dr. Rita Roussos, as she takes you on a journey through classical Athens, to Delphi, across the Gulf of Corinth, and into the Peloponnesian Hills, where the hero Hercules began his twelve labours, and King Agamemnon set out to rescue Helen and capture Troy. Make sure to hit the link in the description below to learn all about this amazing trip, and we hope to see you there! Hathor was not only a powerful goddess, but was also one of the most popular in ancient Egypt. And it's not surprising, since she was the goddess of love, fertility, beauty, pleasure, music, dancing, and was also the protector of women and women's health and childbirth. Hathor originated early in Egyptian history from either the pre-dynastic period or the early dynastic period. And although she doesn't appear too often in the pyramid texts, which are inscriptions regarding the afterlife, she is an important deity in the coffin texts. She was a complex goddess with many responsibilities and associations, and her name, meaning the House of Horus, places her in an important position as mother or consort of Horus, the falcon god. In the pyramid texts, the domain or House of Horus was a place in the sky where the dead king could be rejuvenated, which also links the goddess with rejuvenation and rebirth. As a sky goddess, Hathor was associated with the morning and evening star, Venus, as well as the solar disk. Hathor was an incredibly popular goddess, and was also known as the patroness of foreign regions, the mistress of drunkenness, of song and of myrrh, as a solar sky goddess, as a goddess important in the afterlife, and as a goddess closely associated with the god Ra. As the goddess of both gemstones and precious metals, and of foreign lands, Hathor also oversaw foreign trade of minerals and other resources. She was depicted in ancient Egyptian art in many different ways, including as a woman, often indistinguishable from the goddess Isis, as a woman with horns on her head and the sun disk in between them, as a woman with the head of a cow, or a cow-woman hybrid head, or completely as a cow, and sometimes as a cow with stars above her. As a bovine, Hathor was particularly venerated in the area of Thebes. Her main centre of worship was at the Temple of Dendera, although she was worshipped widely throughout Egypt. And unlike most other deities who only had priests and priestesses of the same gender as the deity, both men and women worked in the name of Hathor. As a goddess of the afterlife, in time the female dead who were deemed worthy to pass into the field of reeds, the Egyptian paradise of eternal life, assumed the likeness and qualities of Hathor, while the male dead continued to be associated with Osiris in the afterlife. Hathor was also worshipped as the Seven Hathors, who set one's destiny at birth, and who also shared in her many attributes, and were venerated for their ability to assist in matters of love, protection from harm, and, after one's death, were venerated for their ability to protect against dark forces in the underworld. Hathor was also known as one of the incarnations of the deity known as the Distant Goddess which is a goddess in Egyptian literature who abandons her father Ra and assumes the form of a wild feline, among other shapes, to elude his attempts to find or catch her. She hides in the distant deserts and the arid plains, and in this form as distant goddess, she was linked with transformation and identified with other goddesses like Sekhmet, Bastet, and Mut, whom Hathor sometimes changes into. 
The ancient text, The Book of the Heavenly Cow, a story that has been compared to writings like Mesopotamia's Atrahasis and the later biblical tale of Noah's Ark and the Great Flood, relates the tale of Hathor being loosed upon humanity to destroy them after Ra becomes enraged by human ingratitude. The Book of the Heavenly Cow dates back to the First Intermediate Period, between 2181 and 2040 BCE, but the extant versions of the story all come from the New Kingdom, circa 1570 to 1069 BCE. At the beginning of the story, Ra is king of the gods and humanity and has created the world, but the humans are plotting against him because they think he's gotten old and can't manage the world's affairs. Ra hears of their scheme to overthrow him and calls the gods to a council for their advice on the matter. Nun suggests Ra sends his eye to smite the humans, and Ra agrees. The eye of Ra is often personified as a goddess, and in this tale, Ra chooses Hathor to destroy humanity. The goddess is released upon the world, and she kills thousands and transforms into the savage and vengeful goddess Sekhmet in her crazed bloodlust, and doesn't stop when Ra asks her to. With a crazed goddess on the loose, Ra regrets his decision and orders 7,000 jars of beer to be mixed with red ochre to make it look like blood, and then floods the plains of Dendera with it. Hathor Sekhmet continues killing humans until, arriving at Dendera, she drinks the red-coloured beer thinking it's blood, gets drunk, passes out, and wakes up as the peaceful Hathor who is a friend to humanity. This tale not only explains why Bia is drunk at the festival of Hathor, but also why one of her epithets is the Lady of Drunkenness. It was also understood as a cautionary tale against the sin of ingratitude, as anyone who heard it would understand that it is never a good idea to complain about a god, much less plot to overthrow him. Do you believe the Book of the Heavenly Cow influenced the story of Noah's Ark? Let us know what you think in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our new videos every Tuesday and Friday. This video was brought to you by World History Encyclopedia. For more great articles and interactive content, head to our website via the link below. World History Encyclopedia is a non-profit organization and you can find us on Patreon, a brilliant site where you can support our work and receive exclusive benefits like this shirt in return. Your support helps us create videos twice a week. So make sure to check it out via the pop-up in the top corner of the screen or via the Patreon link down below. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you soon with another video.